Space This Week Starship Update concluded with the booster and ship fully stacked for a second wet dress rehearsal test. In case you were under a rock, we are just a few days away from the next launch of Starship. SpaceX has been very busy this week, preparing for it with more full-stack testing, clearing, regulatory milestones and preparing both stages for this flight. SpaceX is gearing up for its fourth integrated flight test of Starship, dubbed IFT-4, scheduled for June 6 pending the receipt of an updated license from the Federal Aviation Administration. Most of us are eagerly waiting for the fourth flight of the Starship and finally there is some good news. As you all know, even though the rocket has been ready for months, it can't launch without the FAA's approval. This is why all eyes have been on the FAA for months, and they have finally made a statement. Whenever SpaceX approaches its launch schedule, all eyes turn to the FAA. In the past, there have been times when SpaceX was ready to launch for months. But due to the FAA not granting the necessary license, the launch was delayed significantly. The first Starship launch is a good example of this. However, Musk realized that reaching his ambitious goal of 1,000 launches per year would be impossible under such strict regulations. In response, SpaceX, along with a few other space companies, took their concerns to senators, asking for a faster and efficient approval process. The FAA has since improved its process, and as a result, the licensing for the third Starship launch was significantly faster. Now, they have just released a crucial update about the next flight approval process, bringing SpaceX closer to liftoff. Recently, Musk announced that they are targeting early June for the next Starship launch, specifically aiming for June 5th. The FAA has now confirmed that Flight 4 is nearly ready for this early June launch window. The FAA's recent update brings some exciting news. After an extensive review, they have determined that no public safety issues were involved in the anomaly during SpaceX's third Starship launch on March 14. This crucial finding means that the Starship vehicle is cleared to resume flight operations even as the investigation into the incident continues. To obtain a launch license, SpaceX usually must meet two critical criteria, ensuring public safety standards and completing the investigation of any previous flight mishaps. Interestingly, for Flight 4, the FAA has indicated that SpaceX only needs to satisfy the public safety standards requirement. This means that as long as SpaceX meets these standards, the launch can proceed even with the investigation into the third flight's anomaly still ongoing. This indicates that the license for SpaceX's fourth Starship flight is likely to be granted in early June. Based on previous experiences, I estimate that the license might be issued on June 4. The FAA typically grants these licenses just hours before the flight, as was the case with Flight 3. Some of you might be wondering why Starship has to go through such a time-consuming approval process, while SpaceX's other rockets, like the Falcon 9, seem to launch almost weekly without any issues. The primary reason lies in the differences between the two vehicles. Falcon 9 is a well-established and extensively tested rocket with a proven track record of successful launches. Over time, the FAA has become familiar with its systems, allowing for a more streamlined approval process. Starship, on the other hand, is a new and highly ambitious vehicle with capabilities that far exceed those of Falcon 9. The Starship is much larger and more powerful designed to carry up to 100 tons of cargo or passengers to Mars and beyond. Whereas the Falcon 9 is smaller, primarily used for satellite deployments and resupply missions to the International Space Station. Additionally, while Falcon 9 is partially reusable, with its first stage capable of landing and being reused multiple times, Starship aims to be fully reusable. This means both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship vehicle itself are designed to be recovered and reused. While safety is crucial, these strict regulations can sometimes slow down progress. I don't think legendary rockets like those used in the Apollo missions would have succeeded if they had faced such strict regulations back then. The good news is that the FAA is working on giving SpaceX a portfolio of launch licenses. What this means is that SpaceX could receive approvals for multiple launches at once, rather than needing a separate license for each flight. This new approach would significantly cut down on the red tape and allow SpaceX to ramp up its launch schedule. In addition to the approval process updates, the launch date is nearly set. Cameron County recently announced 14-hour road closures around the expected launch date. The primary launch date is June 5, with backup dates on June 6 and 7.
what's going to make this launch different from the previous three is the use of a virtual launch tower for landing. This means SpaceX will simulate a virtual tower to calculate how both the tower and the rocket will perform. As if they were using the actual mechanical tower in real life. This simulation helps them understand the potential outcomes, and if the results are positive, they might use the actual launch tower for the next fifth flight. Despite plans for a virtual tower assisted landing, the booster will land in the Gulf of Mexico, likely near the center of the Gulf. For the ship, the splashdown area is in the eastern Indian Ocean, near western Australia and south Indonesia. The FAA also added a new area in the western Indian Ocean, southeast of Madagascar Island. This mission marks a significant milestone in the development of the Starship program. As SpaceX aims to demonstrate the ability to recover both stages of the vehicle intact. The final milestone required to be met for. Flight 4 to be approved for launch. SpaceX took the time to perform some tests of the ship's quick disconnect into phase. An arm as well as a test of FireX, the fire suppression system on the orbital launch ring. And we also saw a low pressure test of the main water dilute system. For reference, here's what a full pressure water dilute system test looks like. This began on Sunday with the second stacking of Ship 29 and Booster 11 ahead of Memorial Day. Holiday. This second wet rest rehearsal I just mentioned before took place on Tuesday just eight days after the first attempt. And then it was time. Tuesday saw the beginning of propellant loading into both Booster 11 and Ship 29 with both vehicles reaching what appeared to be full fill levels. This time it appeared that Starship was fully loaded with propellants or at least to the expected propellant levels and we saw teams perhaps testing a halt. In the count, the propellant load sequence now lasts for about 45 minutes and when the test sequence arrived at the point we expected for the simulated T0 well nothing happened. We thought that maybe SpaceX had another abort but there were no signs of drain back nor a depressment. To save the rocket. The tanking then followed, you can see that. Happening as the frost disappears from the sides of the vehicle and after this a full pressure. Deluge test took place. This was absent from the previous flight for wet stress rehearsal. Test, hence the speculation that it wasn't a complete test, so good to see it featured. Here. And with all that, no more tests are required before launch. We'd of course still. Need to see at least one more D-stack so that the very last pre-launch step can happen. The installation of the flight termination system. This is what blows the ship apart. When a self-destruct command is sent, so for obvious reasons, this isn't installed until the very final step. So we waited for D-stack with bated breath. And on Wednesday, we saw the detachment of the ship's quick disconnect arm and then the chopsticks commenced the Lifting, swinging and lowering of the vehicle down to ground level, presumably for the installation of the flight termination system explosives, and this could potentially be the final ever D-stack of Ship 29 from Booster 11. The explosives are stored in the shipping container bunker. And here you can see the crew removing the explosive charges and making the long walk down to Ship 29 and Booster 11. Here they are installing the charges on Booster 11 and here they are installing them on Ship 29, meaning that we are now literally days away from launch, pending regulatory approval and assuming no snags are detected that would delay things further. With the rehearsal, completed team stand D stack Ship 29 and proceeded to install the flight termination system on both vehicles. This is something that was pretty much done over the course of Thursday, May 30th and ended about that night. SpaceX themselves have stated that they are hoping for launch now. Earlier than the 6th of June if the FAA grants them approval on time, so mark your calendars. For Thursday. Res tack of the vehicles took place on the 1st of June, after pressure hoses. And quick disconnect plates were spotted to have been removed from Ship 29 indicating. An imminent final res tack, and there it is in its full glory. After all that's the configuration used for launch what was not as best that was that they would res tack the ship without even completing the thermal protection system. We can see in these views that a few tiles are still missing from near the bottom of the ship. 
perhaps SpaceX lifts may be able to reach this part and install these while the ship is in full stack configuration or maybe this full stack will not last long and the ship will come back down again soon. If it's just a temporary full stack it is not clear why SpaceX would stack the vehicles. As testing has seemingly been completed. But perhaps SpaceX still needs to run some fit checks. Or some more testing that will be performed in the next few days. We just don't know yet. If it is not temporary and this is the final stack for flight it's gonna be interesting to see how. SpaceX deals with these missing tiles ahead of flight. As usual ahead of any Starship launch. We tend to see Elon on X emphasizing what the goals for that flight are. This week we saw him. Once again talking about how important it is for this flight to go through re-entry. He mentioned that right now the thermal protection system is not resilient to. Loss of a single tile in most places as the secondary containment material would probably not survive. Now this doesn't mean that a lost tile anywhere would do my ship but it does mean that Starship is not immune to heat shield tile losses. Therefore if SpaceX once stripped 29 to survive through re-entry, all of this heat shield work must be performed as best as they can. In any case whatever reason, they have for this unexpected restack SpaceX is already preparing the launch site for the launch. If you remember SpaceX had requested the FAA to perform a public safety determination, which is another form for a launch operator to return a flight that does not need the Completion of the mishap report. This means SpaceX can now proceed with a return to flight for Starship without completing the mishap investigation for that flight. However, SpaceX still needs a launch license modification. So we are still waiting on that ahead of this launch, and this should be the last piece of paperwork needed for Starship to fly once again. As we have mentioned in previous videos, this license Modification could come up at any point before the flight and still be valid so be prepared because once it goes out SpaceX will quickly put everything into launch mode. With everything almost ready, the countdown for Flight 4 begins. During this waiting period, SpaceX also tested its water deluge system, which involves a mega steel pancake design that sprays water to absorb the immense heat and force from the rocket's engines during launch. This system aims to prevent damage to the launch pad by reducing the impact of the rocket's exhaust. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.